Hey everyone, this is Jason from Alphatone Audio, and today we're going to be talking about these Neutric Combo Connectors. I'm sure you've seen these. These are pretty uh, standard nowadays, uh, not only in high-end gear, but also uh, lower priced entry-level gear. And essentially, they allow you to use either an XLR or a quarter-inch jack for your inputs. But they basically take those two inputs, they put them on top of one another, so you get two connectors in the space of one connector. And these are great for gear manufacturers because it allows them to put more inputs and offer more flexibility on their gear. And they're also great for the DIY project studio enthusiast that likes to have all kinds of creative options in their wiring schemes. First thing we're going to talk about is the naming, naming convention on these because there are a lot of options as far as different part numbers on these. There's easily a couple dozen if you go to the website. Now on most of the product pages on the Neutrik website, you can download a document and it explains their naming convention and how it works across all their different part numbers. And once you see it, it makes it quite a bit easier to understand. The three part numbers we have in front of us today are the NCJ5FI-S, the NCJ6FI-S, and the NCJ9FI-S. So going through the part guide, there's actually a few departures on these combo jacks from the standard. So let's just walk through it. The N standing for Neutrik, allegedly. Um, the CJ stands for combo jack, which is not in the part guide. The number, in this case five, six, or nine, is the number of contacts on the back. The next is gender, in this case it's F for female, and all the combo jacks are listed as female. The I is the series, and there's two series on these combo jacks. There's an I and there's also an A series. The A series only has, I think, four part numbers in it, and they're all PCB mount, and I think they're a little bit smaller in some of the dimensions than this I series. And then lastly, we have the dash S, which is the termination type. Now, these are all solder cups. Um, even though in the official Neutrik part number guide, the solder cups are typically designated with an L, for sure the dash S on these means solder cup, because if you look at the other combo jacks, the other des designations that they use are going to be either H or V for the horizontal or the vertical PCB mount. So if you want the PCBs, you're, you don't want the dash S's for sure. You're going to be looking for one of the other PCB suffixes. But if you just want panel mount and you want the solder cups, um, the dash S is what you're going to want. You'll also see one other part number designator on these, which is a, a dash zero, and that's for the retention spring parts, which means it's not gonna have this push button on here to release the locking me mechanism so you can take the cable out. That will be missing if the part number ends in the dash zero. Okay, now that we understand the naming scheme, hopefully, let's talk about the physical construction on these. On the back, you're gonna have a certain number of contacts, which you learn from the, the part number, and there's always going to be separate contacts for the quarter inch inputs and the XLR inputs. So on this picketer one, you're going to have three contacts labeled one, two, and three for the XLR, and you're going to have three additional contacts labeled T, R, and S for tip, ring, and sleeve on the quarter inch. And there's also a seventh contact in here, which is not counted in the six in the part number, that you're ground. Now, it's not the audio ground. This is your true chassis or technical ground. It's totally separate from the audio path. Now, maybe you're thinking, hey, I thought these were supposed to be combo jacks where I could plug either in or either or into the input and I would just get one cable coming out the back. That's actually not how they're designed. There's nothing on the inside of this jack that connects the XLR and the quarter inch contacts. That's something you have to do by yourself. And it's pretty easy. All you have to do is just put a jumper. And by say jumper, I don't mean it's anything fancy, just a small piece of wire, usually just you know 26 gauge or something small. And you would actually just jumper, uh, in this particular case, the tip over to like pin two. And then one of these connectors, depending on how you do it, I typically use the XLR, but it's going to have two cables soldered onto it. One is going to be the jumper from the tip, and the other one is going to be part of the cable that leaves the jack and goes off to the destination. Now, over here on the switch jack, and there's two types of these, either switched or non-switched. On the switched ones, you'll see an additional set of contacts. And these are the normal contacts, and they're always normal to the quarter inch connector. So in addition to the TRS, you have TN or tip normal, RN or rig normal, or S end and sleeve normal. They also make a 10 pin version of this in which they have an additional ground connector, which is normal, but that's on the XLR side. So if you are very particular about your grounding schemes, that may be a good part for you to look into. But we'll talk a little bit more about these normals just a little bit later. 
So getting back to the contacts on these, and maybe if you thought that there was just going to be one set on the back and then it was automatically going to be connected on the inside and that's just not the case, there is an advantage to this. And while if you just want one single cable coming out the back, it is a little bit more work in the installation, you do have that additional flexibility and if you wanted you could run two different cables out of the back, which means you could use one cable connected to pins one, two, and three for the XLR connector and an entirely separate cable connected to pins T, R, and S for the quarter inch. So why would you want to do that? Well, just one particular example. If you look at a lot of audio interfaces nowadays, they typically have a few mic inputs on standard XLR connectors or even combo connectors, and you also have a few additional quarter inch line level inputs. So let's just say you have four of each just for this example. What you could do is you could take four of these combo connectors and between those four connectors you could physically wire eight different cables to the back. That's two cables per combo connector. Four of them that are going to terminate into male XLRs and the other four they're going to terminate into male quarter inch plugs or TRS plugs. Now two advantages you have here. One, it allows you to keep your input panel smaller if they're wall panels or rack panels, whatever. So basically, it allows you to keep the amount of input jacks you have as small as possible. And two, it allows you to optimize the cabling between your mic and your line level inputs. Okay, one more thing to consider. Let's get back here to the switching jack. Now again, in the descriptions on the website and the product information, they're going to say that each one of these combo jacks is either switching or non-switching. This is non, this is non, and this is the only switching jack we have here. And like I said, the switching jack is going to have that extra set of contacts in there, which are the normals to the quarter inch connectors. So again, T to TN, S to SN, and R to RN. When I say normal, if we just do a continuity test, get the beep. If I go from T to TN, you can see I get continuity. And again, on the standard ones, you don't. There, there, again, there's nothing on the corresponding pins, there is no connectivity. But on T to TN, I get continuity. But, that's the only one. Pin 2 still doesn't go to anything. So again, still complete disconnect between the quarter wrench and the XLR contacts. Now, Like I said, these two are connected until I plug in a quarter wrench cable. As soon as I plug it in, that is going to break the normal. So if I go and I do a continuity test on this again, I get nothing. Just touched it. Again, nothing between that tip and that tip normal contact. So practically, what could you do with this functionality? Well, whenever I hear switching or particularly normaling, I'm always thinking patch bay. What you could do is you could look at this jack as being a single point, single row patch bay. However, instead of the patch points being on the front where you would normally use like a quarter inch or a TT cable to route your signals around, patch points would actually be on the back with the top row or the input being connected to the T, R, and S jacks and the bottom row or the output connected to pins 1, 2, and 3. In addition, you would jumper from the normal set of jacks or the normal set of contacts to pins 1, 2, and 3. Not TRS to 1, 2, 3. TN, RN, and SN over to 1, 2, 3. So how that happens is your input doesn't actually come from the front of the jack that you plug into. It's permanently wired into the TR and S contacts. Those are always normaled over to the normals, and then you jumper the normals to one, two, and three. So technically you would have signal, signal flowing through there into the TRS, and then you would have your output cable coming out of pins one, two, and three. Then whenever you wanted to interrupt that signal path with something else, you would do it by simply plugging that new input into the signal path into the quarter inch jack on the front. That breaks off the original from the TRNS and then it feeds that into pins one, two, and three. And as I mentioned earlier, they do one more version of this, which is the 10 pin. And the normal, again, there it's on the ground and it's also controlled by the XLR pins. So again, if you need to do a little bit of fancy stuff on the grounding scheme in your studio, that could be something that you should look into. So with that, that's about all I have for the combo jacks. Um, they're very cool. There's a lot of good functionality in there. They can save you a lot of time and space in the studio. And honestly, for what they charge for these, I think they're, they're not terribly expensive. They're not that much more than a standard XLR or quarter inch jack. So definitely find your, different, your, uh, your favorite retailer and check them out. For any of you out there that are listening and you actually use 
these switching type jacks with the normals on it, do me a favor, leave me a comment and let me know how you're implementing these. When, when I was doing research for this, I found very, very few use cases of people that are actually using the switching jacks. So if you're using them in an application you're happy with them, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Uh, and with that, that's all I have for the combo jacks. I uh, hope you learned something from this and I will see you next time.